I'm really excited for the conversation we're going to have today with our expert, who her name is Adele Spragan, because, you know, on this broadcast, we love to talk about goal setting. We love to talk about achieving those goals. We love to talk about making consistent progress. But the thing is, you know, a lot of us, well, not a lot of us, we, we've all been programmed from our past experiences. We've all been programmed from our childhood. We've been programmed based on the friend circles that we spend time with, the careers that we've had, the businesses we've started. We've got all this programming in here. And we often talk about a lot of the external things such as, you know, setting the goals and doing the journaling and taking care of your body. But we never really talk about the science behind goals and goal achievement. And today we're going to be talking specifically about how you can reprogram your brain for success so that you can actually achieve these goals that you're creating for yourself. So without further ado, today we are going to be talking with Adele Spragan, who's joining us from Canada today, actually. And for those who don't know Adele, she is an award-winning author a thought leader, and an international speaker and trainer. She's been awarded the 2020 Woman of Inspiration Award, which is awesome. And in 2021, she was recognized as the top behavioral expert of the year. Wow. Her book, Shift, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment, has won three awards and is sweeping the globe, transforming how people are setting and achieving their goals. And we'll be talking about that too. After decades of feeling stuck in patterns of procrastination, avoidance, and quitting, all of which had her living her life below her fullest potential, Adele set out on a journey of discovery and learning. Her top question, why the personal and professional methodology she was following did not work for her. The result is the creation of her proprietary four-step repatterning technique, which she delivers through a member portal called the Pattern Maker Hub. Today, Adele supports thousands of people globally to achieve extraordinary levels of happiness, peace of mind, prosperity, goal achievement, and life fulfillment. Adele, it is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Let's just kick it off. I'm always curious, especially with what you do, who specifically do you love to work with and how do you help those individuals? I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs primarily, coaches, consultants, um, especially people who are just new to the business. They, they've tried a few times to get to their goals and they're still struggling. So I don't teach the practical. I teach the mindset side of things. Mm. Now, let me ask you this. What percentage, if you had to give it a percentage, what percentage of their success of the clients you work with comes down to mindset and which percentage comes down to the technical? Well, I think there's a reason why, what did they say, about 20% of entrepreneurial businesses succeed. I think the <laughs> reason for that has a lot to do with how we are taught to set and achieve our goals. I like to say that we're following the wrong operating instructions, Brandon, as it relates to how our brain is actually working. So when entrepreneurs work with me, they typically, like, you know, our, our informal surveys that we do in-house, they get about an 87% success rate compared to the 25, 20, 25% success rate out there on the market. So I think it's a huge difference when you know how to work with your brain. Very interesting. Yeah, you, you were never taught, you know, how to use your brain to succeed in high school. So this is something that a lot of people stumble into, just like a lot, most people stumble into personal development. I didn't discover it until I was 21 years old, going through all these problems in my life. But I never actually had someone sit down and, and help me through the science of what's actually going on here and how I can use it. I, I've, you know, I've delved in NLP a bit and I love using NLP. But my question is, a lot of people listening, everyone listening is familiar with with the idea of personal development and self-growth. So what exactly, if you had to explain it, is this world of brain repatterning and what exactly does that even mean in the work that you do? Yeah, so, you know, in the last 20, 25 years, neuroscience, the research coming out of um, brain research is incredible. And it, it really is transforming everything that we do, everything that we believe about how we should be setting and achieving our goals. So, um, what, what science is now showing us is that action is actually taking place before conscious awareness. And some of your listeners may know that or have heard that. But when you really dive in and think about it, that makes a huge difference to how you are going to take a brand new action. 
So here's a brand new entrepreneur. They're just new to the market. That's a whole lot of skill that they have never had to have before they come into the market. So how do we change that brain patterning so that it achieves the goals on your behalf? Rather than you having to figure it out, you've got this amazing tool inside your skull that actually has a lot of capacity that we don't know how to use. So we start with the brain patterning and everything shifts remarkably quickly. That line that you just said is extremely fascinating. Action takes place before conscious awareness. I'm having a little trouble conceptualizing this. Yes. So how is there another way that you can explain what that means and maybe yeah. what that looks like practically? Absolutely. So we used to believe that the sequence that led up to action was to think first, to feel second, and to act last. But actually what neuroscience is now showing us that what happens is we feel first, information streams in through our senses, and that information changes our body's vibration and our body reacts to what is going on in our environment. We then um, feel, oh, sorry, act second. The body moves into action. You wanna know why your hand is in the cookie jar before you, when you've said, <laughs> I'm gonna die and I don't wanna take that cookie. It's because the brain's patterning is already moving you in that direction. And then we think last, the brain comes in last, the mind comes in last and says, oh, I think I would like a cookie. But you're, the impetus to act is already pushing you in that direction. Wow, okay, so let's revisit that. So I, I used to believe it was think, or I used to believe it was feel, and then you think about that and it gives you a specific emotion and then you act based on that. But it actually is, you feel, you take the subconscious action and then you think about it after you do it. I mean, that explains the cookie jar analogy, right? You're, you're doing it and then you're thinking afterwards, oh, I'm doing this again. It's just an automatic pattern. Wow. So what exactly, you know, I know your book talks all about this, but if you had to give us a taste of this process, what's the process that we would go through to shift what we do from think, feel, and act to really, yeah. or, or shift it to, to what will actually benefit us. What's that process look like to repattern that? Right, so I like to say there are no good or bad actions, okay? There's no good or bad patterns. There is only, does it work or doesn't it work? So how I work with people is we always reflect back on what you are doing and we ask, okay, did that work for you? As an entrepreneur, did your sales conversation, for exa example, work? And if the answer is no, then let's dive into the brain's patterning and transform that, reprogram that, so that the next time you have a sales conversation, it does work and it's effective. So we always start with reflecting back, asking, does it work? And then changing whatever didn't work by changing the pattern. Interesting. Okay. So let's say we had a sales conversation or we even had, you know, let's say we're a leader in a company. We had a conversation with someone. It did not go the way that we expected it to. We got the result we didn't want. You asked them, did that work? They say, no, Adele, it didn't work for me. What would the process look like for helping that individual to shift that behavior? Yeah. So the first thing we need to know is every action that somebody takes, every behavior they adopt, every belief they hold is the result of an underlying brain pattern. If we could peel back our skull and look inside our brain, what would we see, Brandon? I'll tell you what we'll see. It's dark in there. It's silent in there. There is no taste in there. There is no touch in there. All that we would see is these electrical impulses that are flying down channels at a super rapid rate. And each one of those electrical impulses is driving a particular action, a particular behavior, a particular belief. So if we start to think of our brain in that way, we start to see, oh, the issue is never out there in the situation. The issue always originates inside a brain pattern that is now obsolete, that is just in need of an upgrade. So we start there. So that's the first step is what, what are you doing? What are you believing? What are you thinking? that doesn't work. And then we're going to look under the, under the water at the pattern itself. So a pattern is an intertwined physical sensation, emotion, and thought. When the three aspects of our being come together, it drives a particular action, a particular behavior, a particular belief. So we're going to tease apart that pattern. We're just going to tease apart that neural pathway 
The brain is brilliant. It will snap into a brand new channel. And boy, will you take a new action with confidence, with with happiness, with everything that people look for in that mindset. Now, everyone listening knows that I'm huge into like the practical, like how would we actually sit down with somebody and help them to do that with within the inner workings of their brain? How do you help someone to create that new pathway in their brain? Like what does that physically look like? So it's a four step process. It starts with first identifying the pattern. That's probably one of the most trickiest steps. We don't see ourselves very well, <laughs> just put it that way, right? Like people believe that they know everything that they're doing, every behavior they're adopting, every belief they hold, but they don't actually. A lot of it is in the conscious mind is not aware of what's going on in the unconscious and the subconscious mind. So we start with, okay, let's identify what's actually going on. Then the second step is to own it as a pattern. Like I'm saying, the, the, the situation is not driving that result. The pattern is driving that result. So we've got to flip that switch. I created that pattern. And I'll, I'll back up to that in a moment, Brandon, because that's really important for your listener to know. The third step is to deconstruct that pattern or to tease it apart. And that's a matter of, um, uh, it's a special way of observing that pattern within your brain so that you don't act on it. And then the fourth step is to upgrade it and create a new pattern. Honestly, the four steps are simple. And if if something is not simple, then my act, my reaction is that probably won't work. So the four steps are extremely simple. The identifying that pattern is the key thing. And I think probably for your listeners, that might be the most beneficial thing that we could do today is help them to understand what doesn't work, especially when it comes to sales, because I know a lot of your people work with sales. Yeah, absolutely. So step two there, owning it as a pattern. You yes. said that. Yeah, tell uh, yes. me more I about that. I said I'd back up to that one. So here's the thing. Human beings, the only thing that we can possibly say about our brain is that it is adaptability itself. That is all we have. Um, other animals have instincts. Other animals are born knowing what to do. We are not. We are born pretty much a blank slate. And as we enter this world, we very, very quickly have to piece together patterns. So that starts from the moment that we're born throughout childhood. There's a massive amount of pattern creation inside the brain. In adolescence, another massive growth spurt of, of pattern creation. And then as we enter adulthood, things starts to slow down a little bit. And our brain pretty much thinks, oh, I've got a pattern for everything now. I don't need a new pattern. And so it runs on these old patterns. Now, Anybody wondering why they're not getting, they're not feeling confident? Well, let's think about this. When you were five years old, do you think that you did things that maybe you didn't do as well as you could have, right? At that age, five, six, seven years old, like maybe you just weren't all that good at something. Well, the brain doesn't care. It stored that pattern and it continues to use that pattern even though we upgrade our language into this adult conversation, we're still running, there's a seven-year-old running the show in here, right? Okay. <laughs> so the only problem is, is that nobody's taught us how to remove an obsolete pattern that is in need of an upgrade. But our brain, as I said, it is adaptability itself. That is how it is designed. It is supposed to be upgraded. We just didn't know that. And we've been running on old obsolete patterns for generations and generations. Well, neuroscience today shows us, yes, you can upgrade it. So let's do that. It's so important. Everything you just said and specifically what you said about owning this as a pattern that was created either when you were young or you created it even in your adolescence or moving into your adult life. But the the important part is owning that you've created this pattern, but also taking ownership of it by saying, I can actually upgrade this pattern. It kind of goes back to like the growth mindset versus the the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. So let's let's use an example that I, I know you like to talk about, and I do too, because it's so important with entrepreneurship and really anyone who is going after something that they want to go after. There's tasks that have to get done, but we get in the middle of something and then we think, well, I can do that later. I can push it off. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow morning. I want to spend the evening for me. So let's talk about procrastination a little bit. And let's talk about this this structure here, steps one through four, 
in the sense of procrastination. So I have things that I know that I need to do and get done for my business. Maybe the small mundane things I don't enjoy to do, right? If we break down that pattern of, okay, you think of what you need to do. And then it's in a way you, you automatically decide that you're not going to do it yet. So how does this process relate to procrastination and how do you help people through that? Yeah, that's a great question. So Here's the thing that your listener needs to know. Human beings do not procrastinate. We avoid. So what is it that we're avoiding? Well, we think we're avoiding the situation out there or the task at hand. We are not. We are avoiding the internal yucky feeling that comes about when we consider doing that task. Wow. Now, to know that is really empowering because it's like, okay, I've got a task of picking up the phone and making a sales call. How does that make me feel? Oh, I feel scared. Oh, I feel anxious. Oh, I think that somebody's going to say no and they're going to reject me. Perfect. That is what the person is avoiding. Nothing to do with picking up the phone, nothing to do with the sales conversation. So, knowing that, again, that's powerful because now you can say, okay, I've got a pattern that is driving that reaction. I'm going to deal with that pattern. Poof, magic wand, if that could disappear, there's absolutely no reason not to be picking up the phone and making those phone calls. Wow, that that phrase you just said, procrastination doesn't exist. It's simply avoiding that feeling that we get when we think when we think about the thing that we know we should do. So we know we should prospect. We know we should pick up the phone and make the phone call. Then we get that feeling in our body. And what generally happens then? We instead go do something else to take our mind off of that feeling. Is that what happens? Yep. Yep. We'll move to a more pleasurable sensation within the body. So, and that might be anything. They might go and watch TV or play on the phone or, you know, text somebody. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's the, it's the displeasure and then the pleasure. That's where we're trying to get to. So you're working with me, let's say, and I'm, I'm working to overcome this, this avoidance in a sense of this feeling. Would you then say, okay, Brandon, you know, you're avoiding this yucky feeling when you pick the phone up. So just make the phone call when you feel that, or what, how would you guide me through that? What does that sound like? No, you know, I mean, that that's the that's the thing that everybody is told to do. Just yeah. go do it. Just use willpower. Just push through. But patterns are powerful and they will not sometimes allow you to push through. For some people, it works for that 20 percent who are succeeding out there in the world. Yes. Pushing past your comfort zone, just doing it anyway, sticking to commitment. That works for them. But if it's not working for you, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just simply <laughs> that nobody's taught you how to upgrade a brain pattern. So it wasn't working for me. If I can just share my story. Yeah, I please. quit three businesses, one after another. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. This was 15 years ago. I started three businesses. Problem was I quit each and every one of them because I kept hitting up against that comfort zone every time I had to go out there and sell them what I was going to do boom, that pattern would interfere and stop me from doing that. And I kept running away from the situation, starting another business. Okay, so it doesn't work. It just, it works for some, not for all. So therefore, it doesn't work. That's my attitude. And so what, what, what did I do? Well, I took myself back to university. I decided I'm going to study this human brain. There's something wrong with the operating instructions I've been given. And so I went back to university. I started to study how our brain actually works. And yes, I did discover that patterns are in charge. And I had a pattern for quitting. Until wow. I changed that pattern, I couldn't stop quitting. That was the way my brain worked. Perfect. But then I created a tool to change the pattern. And then I today... Honestly, working with patterns, Brandon, it's interesting because you literally step out of one identity into another. You move from an identity in which I was quitting into an identity in which quitting just no longer enters my brain. It is that powerful. And, and that's how quickly the way did the that brain happen for you? How quickly? Um, it to initially learn how to repattern your brain takes six weeks. It takes six weeks to learn the tool. After that, it's a two minute technique that's done inside the privacy of somebody's own head. Wow. So once you know how to do it, it's a two minute tool. You just keep applying that technique until you step out of that identity into another. So you just keep doing it. 
So some for some people, it takes, you know, some patterns, I should say, not some people. Some patterns, it takes them two minutes. Some patterns take two weeks. But who cares? You've got a tool in your pocket yeah. and you can do it. So, you know, right? Like, you know, it, it's better than trying to push past your comfort zone and butting up against all of those unworkable patterns that are in our brain. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure you see the same patterns over and over and over again. What are some of the most common patterns that most people are dealing with, especially in today's world? Yeah, well, I, I know you like the practical. So let, let's just explore a sales conversation inside somebody's head. That's probably the easiest way to look at brain patterns. Okay. So the other thing that, that your listener might like to know is that your brain is divided, as we know. There are two hemispheres. Most people know that, a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. What brain science has now debunked is this idea that you, the right side of your brain is creative and the left side of your brain is logical. We need to throw away that understanding. That's actually not true. But there is a very a, a deep difference between how these two hemispheres are operating. So the right side of your brain is all about the here and now. It's all about being present in this moment. The left side of your brain is using past created experiences, past created patterns to translate what is going on in this current moment. So tell me if I've made sense, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect, okay. So what happens is the right hemisphere absorbs all the information that is in the present moment. It passes that information over to the left hemisphere and the left hemisphere translates what's going on, okay? And ideally, it's supposed to pass that information back to the right for integration and for context. That We've lost that. It's no longer passing that information back due to over-prioritizing and over-educating of the left hemisphere, okay? Wow. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's go to a practical sales conversation. So here you are on the phone. The right hemisphere is all about relationships, reciprocity, trust. The left hemisphere is all transactional. Um, it's all about uh, money in the case of a sales conversation. So here you are. There are, as Dan Ariely likes to say, we live by two sets of rules. One rule is, are the friendship rules. One rules are the market rules. Okay? Yeah. If we can translate that in the brain, left hemisphere is the relationship, the, the social rules. Sorry, right hemisphere is the social rules. Left hemisphere is the market rules. Okay. So here you are in a sales conversation, and most people are taught, hey, you need to be um, in relationship with this person in order to create a sale, right? Yeah. And yes, you do need to understand that person. You need to lean in. You need to know their needs. All of that is occurring in the right hemisphere. And then it comes to that money conversation. Suddenly in your brain, you have shifted from the right hemisphere into the left hemisphere. Mm. And that's where things feel uncomfortable because now you, you're moving from friendship to transactional. Wow. And so your brain does this little weird, I can't do that kind of thing inside <laughs> your head. You feel it physically <laughs> too. You feel the shift. You do. You feel it, right? People go, and, and they get all tensed <laughs> up and all anxious and all that. That is a sign that you've moved from one side of your brain to another. Wow. Right? Okay. Now the same thing is occurring on the person who you're trying to sell to. That same shift inside the head has to happen. And if you don't know how to gently take that person's hand and let them know that you're moving over to the market lane, they push back because they go, something's off here. We're, we're in this transactional relationship lane. And now, boom, you've moved me over to the market lane, but you haven't told me you're moving me over to the market lane. Wow. So practical on the court, how do we do this? Well, as a salesperson, we have to let the person know. And we just say, we actually say, um, I would like to have a sales conversation now. I would like to tell you about a product or a service that I'm selling. Would that be okay? All wow. right. So what you've done is you just walk them from the friendship lane over to the market lane. You've, you've moved them inside their brain. Perfect. Now the person knows exactly which lane they're in right? Now you can say something like, make sure. So here's, uh, you guys can see me. So I'm going to use my hands. You got these two lanes. 
You're driving down this one, which is the social lane. You're going to walk this person over to the market lane. You're now in transaction. So you need to tell them where this conversation is going to start and where it is going to end. So, Brandon, I'd like to tell you about my services. Would that be okay? You yeah. say yes. Okay. So, Brandon, here's how this conversation is going to work. I'm going to help you to identify exactly what is in the way, which patterns are stopping you. At the end of that, you will be in one of two places. You're either going to say, great, Adele, thank you, I'm good to go, or you're going to say, okay, Adele, what are my next steps? Either way is okay with me, Brandon. Is that okay with you? Okay. Wow, yes. What have I done? I have A, walked them from social lane over to market lane. I have B, told you where that conversation starts and where that conversation stops. And I have let you know that you're going to have 100% choice. I you love that. are comfortable, right? We're <sighs> now driving in the same lane. We're not in two separate lanes going, what is going on here? Right? With one foot in each car going, whoa, things are really off. So, to do that is so easy. Now they come to the end of you come to the end of that sales conversation. I actually bring you back to what I have said at the beginning. And I said, Okay, Brandon. So remember, I said at the beginning of this call that you would be in one of two places, mm -hmm. you are now there. So tell me what you would like to do now. Would you like to know about more about my services? Or are you good to go? Okay, so now I'm back to giving you that choice. I have now represents you to where you were in the conversation. If you say, I'm good to go, Adele, we have just moved back over to the social lane. Fantastic, right? And yeah. we can remain in that friendship lane. If you say, yeah, yeah, tell me what the next steps are. We're still in the market lane and I'm still being transactional. Now I introduce dollar cents and, you know, the practical, well, here's how my program works. Get it? Yes. It, you're you're guiding them through an experience with smooth transitions that helps to bring them from one hemisphere to the next hemisphere, bringing them where you want them. Because to give you an example, I remember I was uh, I did a master class once. Where at the end of the master class, I offered my group program, and the first time I did this. I switched immediately from the content to talking about the program. And I remember I got on a call with someone who I really respected, one of my friends, and uh, her name is Liesl. And she gave me some feedback. And I said, what would you give me for feedback? And she's like, well, the only thing is when you jumped from talking about all these great things to talking about the program, it like stumped me. I, I, I almost wasn't ready to make that transition because I was still writing down content. So when you brought up the program, I wasn't really able to be fully presently there. Right, exactly. So see how you're in the social lane, you're supporting, you're leaning in, you're listening, you're helping somebody. And then not getting to that transactional lane is jarring for the person who's listening. Yeah, I love that. I love that a lot. Thanks for going into that. I'm sure that's going to help a lot of salespeople, business. Owners. I mean, we're all selling. So that's going to help every single person listening. Very awesome. Now, let me ask you this before we talk about your book, because I definitely want to talk about your book and your services as well. What routines do you have in place, or maybe you don't? I'm just curious. What routines do you have in place when it comes to the patterning or the intentional patterning of your brain moving forward? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't understand the question. Ask me again. Sure. Uh, uh, maybe I'll ask in a different way. Okay. What are some routines that people can incorporate into their life? That will help them to consciously and intentionally pattern their brain for success the first time around. Oh, okay. So let me give you the new operating instructions that I teach. That's probably the best way. So, so we'll, we'll <laughs> compare them. Okay. So the operating instructions that most people are very familiar with are these. Number one, set a goal. Number two, determine the steps to get to that goal. Number three, if you don't know what those steps are, find somebody who does, a mentor, a trainer, a teacher. Number four, if you do know how to take the steps and you're not taking the steps, it is likely your mindset. Upgrade that, recommit to your goals, um, vision, all of that stuff, do affirmations, and there should be no reason that you do not get to your goals. So at number five, if you don't still take those steps, there's something wrong with you. Go back, start again. Right? Everybody yeah. familiar with that? I mean, if we break it down, that's that's how it comes out. Okay. Yeah. 
once we understand brain patterns, all of that has to change. So let's do the new operating instructions. Number one, set a goal. Number two, don't ask what are the steps to get to that goal? Because if you don't have a pattern in your brain to take those steps, there is no point. Okay. So the second question to ask yourself is why do I not have that goal today? Wow. Let me explain what I just said. If you have a goal, you do not have the patterns in your brain to get to that goal. How do we know? Because it's a goal and it's not something that you're already achieving. All right. If it was something you were already achieving, it would not be a goal. I mean, that, that's, it's simple, right? Okay. Yeah. So the very fact that you have to set a goal already tells me that there are obsolete patterns that are in need of an upgrade. So why do I not have that goal today? And you'll notice that you start listing all of these actions or in act, lack of actions that you're not doing. Okay. You start listing all of these behaviors that you're not adopting. You start listing all of these beliefs. And it is a belief, I do not know the steps to take. That might be a very valid belief. Mm. Perfect. We start removing all of those patterns. Let's just get rid of them. All right. We'll take them out of your brain. If we could just dip inside your skull and just reach in there and pull out that pattern and we're just going to drop it on the outside. Then who are you at that point? Well, you will start to take actions. So I don't know how to be an entrepreneur. Perfect. At that point, if that is absolutely true, remember I said it's tricky to identify your patterns, then you will find a trainer. Okay. Now the trainer says to you, get out there and sell. And you go, well, oh my gosh, I suddenly feel all this anxiety. Wonderful. Knowing that that's a brain pattern, Again, you can reach in there, tease apart that brain pattern, create another one, and you will be selling. But not from pushing past your comfort zone, not by committing, just simply because you now have an upgraded pattern for selling and because that's what you need to do in order to be an entrepreneur. That is great. In your book, The Four Steps to Personal Empowerment, that goes through each step to break these patterns. Is that correct? It does. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it, it, the new operating instructions on the third step is repattern the brain. So, yeah, grab my book. The four steps are in there. As you butt up against these patterns, use those four steps and you will be taking those new actions. Now, let me ask you this. I, I went to your website. Is it true you're giving away the digital copy of this book for no charge? I'm giving away a physical copy of this book for no charge. Wow. All I ask is that people pay for shipping. So if they want to just pay for that shipping, I will ship them an autographed copy of that book. Oh, that is incredible. Very cool. And just so everyone knows, Adele's website is shift4steps.com, shift4steps.com. I'm going to have the link in the description where you can literally scroll down just a little bit and you can click the uh, the button that literally will bring you to the, uh, the her free book, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment. You just pay the shipping. Adele, is there any, any other things that you wanted to make us aware of in terms of what you're working on in your world or what, what we can expect from you moving forward? Yeah, there's lots of exciting things happening in my world. When COVID hit, I, I did everything, live events, Brandon, as maybe some of your listeners did as well. And so when the pandemic hit, I had to convert everything to online. So there's tons of training on there and more to follow. And it's all within the Pattern Maker Hub now. So the sales training in there using the left brain, right brain, um, freedom from anxiety. There's so much stuff in there that people can use. That is incredible. So amazing. I want to ask you this as a closing question before I ask where we can follow you more closely. What is the positive impact that you're looking to make and are making on the world during this chapter of your life? You know, I said earlier, Brandon, that the left hemisphere is being over prioritized and over it's, it's now it, just because it lacks that balance of the right hemisphere, we're losing all context in our world. And honestly, I would like to help people to understand, first of all, what's going on. We're living in a, in a very 
interesting times. Let's put it that way. And to understand how the brain hemispheres work and to understand how this is coming about because of the left hemisphere for a lot of people really lessens that anxiety because not knowing what's going on is very tricky um, for our brain to handle. So to know, oh, okay, now I understand why we are in this age of um, uh, conspiracy theories and, and paranoia and all of that stuff that is happening today. Conflicts. Okay, great. That's the first thing that I do. I educate people on that. The second thing that I do is I teach them how to reconnect to their right hemisphere, how to use a, what I call whole brain enlightened thinking. Once somebody knows how to do that, then honestly, there is nothing that a person cannot manage. Hmm. This brain of ours is incredible. When we know how to use it, it is remarkable. The creative solutions, the um, the amount of resilience, the lessening of anxiety, the peace of mind that comes about from whole brain thinking is amazing. So my job is twofold. A, educate. Why is Why are we in the place we are at today? And then B, help people to find whole brain enlightened thinking within themselves. That is an incredible mission. And I will say, I commend you for coming onto this show and leaving me with more questions than I had before I came into this show. And that doesn't often happen with, I mean, it does every now and then, but I've, you know, I've lived in this world of personal development for a long time now, but I've never really dived into the different hemispheres and the patterning and it's what a fascinating conversation. So I thank you for the great conversation here today and for all the knowledge, but even more importantly, the practical advice that you've given us when it comes to reprogramming your brain for success. So thank you, Adele. Oh, you're very welcome, Brandon. Where can we find and follow you on social? Um, so the best place to start is my website, adelspragan.com, and that's double G, <laughs> rhymes with dragon. And um <laughs> And shiftforsteps.com also has some free training in there as well as, a, as somebody being able to get a copy of my book. I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. Those are my two primary channels. Okay, very good. Go follow Adele. Check out her websites. I'll have links in the description. Adele, thank you very much again for your time and for sharing this wisdom with us. Thank you, Brandon. Another amazing conversation full of talking about the brain, talking about science, talking about these patterns that we've been living with since we were seven years old or even younger, patterns that might be arising every single day in your life. But now with these tools that Adele has given us with these four steps here, identify the pattern, own it as a pattern that you've created, deconstruct it, and then upgrade and create a new pattern. Now that you have these steps, you can begin to think, well, how can I apply these in my own life? And I know I'm going to be purchasing, well, actually, you don't really have to purchase it. I'm going to be grabbing a copy of Adele's book, Four Steps to Personal Empowerment. She's literally giving the copies away for free. She's even signing them. You just pay the shipping cost. To get it, go to shift4steps.com and you can also follow Adele at her website, adelespragan.com. What a great conversation. For those who want to support the broadcast, we don't run any ads. We don't have any things in the middle that you have to listen to to get back to the conversation. The only ask that we have for listening to this enlightening conversation is sharing this show with one person who could use this information, one person who has goals that they want to achieve, but maybe they've stopped along the way or they've procrastinated or as we've heard today, they've avoided or maybe they've quit like Adele talked about in her own personal story. And these repatterning techniques will help them in their own life. So share this with one friend who could use it. As always, thank you so much for watching the broadcast. And until we talk again next time, continue to be better.